Late in the afternoon, hope died out. The waiting crowd thinned and silent men and women sought their homes. In the humbler homes of Southampton, there is scarcely a family who has not lost a relative or friend. Children returning from school appreciated something of tragedy, and woeful little faces were turned to the darkened, fatherless homes. The Daily Mail, 23rd of April, 1912. Oceanus. It sank in the now, expat down with all hands, seen one Wednesday in a sinking southern city. It hit the April shower, serving death en route to Yorkshire, killing peace and war, and Mary timed it well. She was the biggest, longest woman to float the virgin shore. She carried earthly money, moving west with dragons and searching for the new world order. It was final, fit as fiddles and sinking in opulence. She was power disguised as newspapers, tight eyes distant and darting to the doors. Mary was barely alive, a product of time with a thousand close relations, half of them drowning underwater. Mary left at ten, dipping south of the border and back once more. She was left inside a shambles four days after crossing into winter. She buckled up her belt and looked down on the stars through opened arms. It was all over in a heartbeat, quicker than a screening of a feature film. Her heart sank and they went women and children first. Mary fell apart and let them go. Instantly drinking, they followed her. They were shocked, awed and outraged, things going missing and failing operations, rules and regulations in stateside seaside safety. Mary left a legacy of silos, ten decades of future improvements, mostly lost clothing and families struggling for money, Chairman Bruce scarred for life accused of cowardice and complacency. Mary's wrecked and seldom seen slowly drifting. We found her and displayed her in museums, going down on her in history. She's famous now, a softly sleeping song background. Mary was born in Belfast, the middle sister of Olympians, formerly gigantic with the biggest tits and tender teens. She talked with Captain Morgan, ran faster than Hamburg and Berlin, raced Ishmael building bins and condominiums. They were built by wolves with bells on, with well-known flowers and designer labels. They switched constants and turned away. Oceanus threw the wolves to the wind and wrote dark lines in dry tombs in case the games gained the ruling troika, charging extra for murder in the water. Dogs and scoundrels whipped the sky with lords and ladies, bearded mathematicians, chess champions and other madmen. They painted seasides red with general implements, building sharp-eyed statues of David's mighty lifetime. Dimensions and layout. Mary was long and tall, and her breasts were measured from head to heel, and sex offenders called her disappointing. She decked her sisters, carried cards for friends and family. She set sails and indexed every hour before the northern star alighted. Bridges were burned and wheels were stacked, and Mary put her first foot forward, a stretched out totalitarian entrance. They came to hit the ceiling, while cigarettes were rolled like seashells. Dead trees eked out racial engines, they lined livers and covered railings. There was another, who stroked reserves and drew palm trees in the courtroom. Mary built bridges and the weight nearly killed her. They took her through promenades, ate in restaurants like lost lepers in the darkness. Mary, she slept by smokers, raised hell's accommodation with gadget machines. They said human flight was impossible. See, she sheltered high and interrupted jawlines, well west of worthless walkways. Mary crewed four castles in the public eye, reading Bibles in the library. They slung guns in western bars, stealing skylines. Goddamn peasants eating pliers in the sunshine. This was a common crib for firemen, and now it's time for water. They cared for cooks and seamen, stained stewards who trimmed beards for pittances, by completionists who took care of nothing, gangsters at the bottom, gangsters who stared through gaps at waterfalls. Mary wore tank tops and swam below the waterline, down beneath the bottom of the boilers. She was the dominatrix, the sleek invisible steam. Mary walked upstairs to D-Deck. Engines, boilers and generators. Oceanus was the ruling troika, hot with reciprocal love and steamy in the middle. She had points to spare and gave love to turbans. They'd been used before. Mary gave back power like a slow car to New Orleans, wore cosmic vibes mixing movies with petroleum, cut back on mysteries while kettles boiled. They were all powerful with two dozen double-ended furnaces. We kept them warm with fire, burning embers, fed by hand, mailing bodies to the sea. It was dirty, dark and dangerous. Desperate men died fighting. Their excrement was something silent. They made legends in the boiling room, drinking milk and steaming waterfalls. Mary had the power. She could feed cities and sparkled aluminium. She kept emergency cigarettes out back and stayed up way past midnight. Technical facilities. 
See, Mary had an ass and needed two long legs to move it. She hopped across town with one shoe in her handbag, stiff spring chickens pitching in with things. She had recruits to captain. She was always fond of crying and warmed her veins by boiling kerosene, complicated but easy to play. They gave her clean water, but she could turn salt sour in a heartbeat. She drove air through classic caravans, sang through chipped teeth, absorbing sound in foreign languages. Her lungs were strung parallel and could really bellow through blackness, the strongest soprano of the century. She ensured her voice and sang for gypsies. Mary was a Marxist, passing icicles through her cheekbones. Passenger facilities. Mary had bountiful babies, treated like kings and locked behind steel doors for doubtful shareholders. She could only carry shopping bags, develop bad manners and ate crackers, drew caricatures and floated overseas. Mary had mobiles picking blackberries in the summer sun. She swam and curled and drank on the veranda, devil's splendours staring stony-faced. She had Paris in the autumn, filtering sunlight. They ruled in isolation, their luxury confined to cabins on the mountainside, numbering hundreds. They pissed in the wind, washed rags and linen, filing iron while pigs sleep with other pigs. They gave them fun and games and smoked cigars outside gymnasiums, walking past broken benches. They printed out addresses and sold them for a face with personality. Mary was famous for her straight spine and she'd go down on anyone. Clouds called her heavenly and life was lighter than iron. She wore wooden watches and prayed for hope and glory. Seconds ticking away like grains of sand in a waterfall. Now she's just a void or a shortcut to the future. Mail and cargo. She was a person for people, a real socialite with a talent for carrying cardboard, cubes of dead limbs and magic bullets. They have issues, man. They brought past relationships and dead generations. They picked them all, packed up in trunks and golden boxes, holy light electrical steaming hotter than the summertime, all that baggage hauling coal. Lifeboats. Mary wore dozens of belts, and her wooden wolves were folding deck chairs filled to brimming. They carried dozens and would cut wood past security guards with odd smiles. Offshore captains courting skinny women who challenged them to carry water to the finish line, stringing ropes around their necks to save the men from drowning. Mary was big enough for everyone, but without a full stomach. Back then, the cold exceeded all expectations. Construction, launch and fitting out. Mary and her sisters were big bottomed and difficult and they had to manage without engines. The wolves overstretched and no jaw could drink the drink she gave to them. Queens bought private islands in the sun and larger bosoms for their daughters. She was huge like Bill and Harry and Harry was high and long for floating German sausages. She was VR incarnate and got laid out and grown through test tubes, boxers, garters, falling over punches to the ribs and spine. They held deep bottomed photographs, big feet to kill the immortals. Mary rolled steel cigarettes and her spinal plates were laid with clinking overlaps, fashionably keeling over in the water. She got laid again and they slipped in and out of armbands, riveted three times over with hydraulics. Inside Mary, she had 16 skulls and small intestines stretched above her gullet, painted love on boards to walk along the beaches, gliding wheelbarrows. She wore life on her leggings and carried armbands as she stood on top of everyone. Three made deals and one posed for photographs only streamed across the airwaves. Mary worked hard and lived on the edge of 15,000 supernovae, nothing two seatbelts can't cure. They hadn't a hat between them. She had a body to die for, and those who did were crushed by dogs, testicles severed by steel shrapnel falling forests. She slid past lords and soap-fed whores, their legs unnamed in violation. They pulled her through keyholes, kitted her in claret with tits too big to stick to intellect. She looked like Oceanus, all funneled brows like dimples and British steel skins, bright red windows to the soul. She sang like bruises and hid the winter from the richest parasites to crawl the biggest bounty in the hemisphere, too late to dodge disaster. Sea Trials Mary started on a Monday and got dragged below the borderlands, held back unfairly, derailed by bad breezes and a shrill southwesterly sunbeam. She was Staffordshire and they greased her with bleach and fire, harlots and charlatans being sick in fish buckets. They tested for love, handled key characteristics, later engulfed and driven to slow despair, turned to a sudden stop. She covered knots and broke international agreements, found worthy to plough mud furrows all the way down south. Mary hit the bottle and gave birth to her humanity. Maiden Voyage Mary's movement was enough to cross oceans and she came home with the sisters of Olympia. They all had legs and subscriptions to magazines, exporting Einstein in every direction imaginable. Mary was trained to meet schedules, to break her legs on the slow train to Cherbourg. They docked her in a brand new baby. Crew 
Mary saved hundreds to wash her hair again. Married maids, men and minions, impertinent teens in casual clothing like bells and bones and incense. Mary had eggs and old potatoes, switching hands when her legs were tied together, tingling beside her. She was divided and her teachers drank no semen, real men stoking stewardesses. Mary was in print and her brother took a bullet to the brain again. It started in Southampton where they built stone huts and subordinates, made French music and covered corn with yolk. Passengers. She was just a number with a thousand open eyes. She travelled light with big kids larger than all who came before her. She was barely full of fluid and she fit filthy firsts and thirds. She'd be filled with junk and crushed diamonds, claiming refuge in cancelled crosses. They stopped so short she set silver earrings, barely saving grace. She stole from her sister and ran for the Iron Hills. They came like sheep in the wind, millionaires and millionaires' wives, industrialists and fast food conglomerates, lords and ladies, businessmen. They came like social like journalists chasing reform and all manner of mutes and morons. Her father wanted peace but she blocked his calls and she told him where to stick it. She forgot the men she slept with and she dodged responsibility. She didn't sell seconds, she clutched straws and mortgaged it all before her. Departure and westbound journey. And just like that, her people came in drones right beneath her bosoms. There were fleas and insects climbing on her shoulders before the great infestation. Big men in strange jackets climbing signposts, and the biggest of all waved his hand back, checked for spots and sh smearing fingers with ink and any blindness. These guys aren't invited to the party. Hundreds left their southern lovers, and others joined them for perfection. She started slowly walking, and her curves caused broad disruption, and she left the island swinging in the Netherlands. Scotty stopped disaster and sent down self-esteem for supper time. Mary swam through static channels, fled to Cherbourg with tender legs and legal specifics, the only star still burning in the sky. They swarmed her like dung beetle holocausts, leaving queens beneath the mud. They launched corks and clouds obscure potato stew. The locals couldn't fit inside her, their rubbers stretched but couldn't swell. They decked her curves in lubricant, sensing danger in half-obscure potatoes buried in his briefcase. She unplanted toenails and crawled towards Atlantis. New beginnings, her cold new beginnings. She was warned, told tales of robberies and the loss of human life. But she started silent, mildly plodding through the springtime. Sinking. Freddy saw stars dealing cards. He steered them back but she was spiked beneath the waistline, sinking deeply into sleep with dreams of steaming diamonds. Life was a drug she carried and she knew hell happened. They tossed out lives like wounded taxi cabs. Mary sealed deals through Middle Earth with hatchways and propellers to cleave the sky in quarters. She was just another floater but they held her like a flower as cold, cold death surrounded her. Mary cried by fire, but she was dripping wax and all alone in California. She drank the wine of virgin death along the motorway. Aftermath of sinking. Arrival of Carpathia in New York. Like that she was gone and Oceanus rose again through fog and days of lightning. Their global damage caused four last words for virgin sisters. They saw truth in muddy corpses, floating brine and pulling solar systems. They mourned her flanks and buried dead. Mary told us to expect stone hearts, singing dull disorders, with pain etched eyes thinking about the children. And Oceana stayed in that great land of the elders, given heroes welcomes despite the April showers. Tired women gave out and travelled across the country, but they didn't stick around to leave bad smells or to cross the pond to Philadelphia. Those closest moved to Lapland to sleep inside a steamer. Oceanus ate herself to merriment, picked up people, parcels and heading home hungry. Vultures gathered photographs, always the first to speak about survival, placing bulletins on old newspapers inside widows' windows. Days later, the glue gathered and ink set in death notes saying, Alone in the dark, we sat quiet and they all grew insubstantial, no one's a friend or an enemy. The living drove like gentlemen, bringing bread and other scarce possessions. They sang special songs for dead benefits, closer to God than anyone. Investigations into the disaster why wait for a sudden homecoming? They started searching straight away, lessons learned from fountains. 
No old man in a gown and wig is laying blame at our feet. He was older than Mary, passing judgment on everyone, alive, fresh, and front of mind. They were held back in custody, still on stateside soil, and no return. Her sisters called the courts bluff, rancid, and aggressive, with just an introduction to eternity. Sharp pangs of truth and justice, the impeachment of J.P. Morgan. They were led by lords with bacon butties, more floats for future Marys. They blamed the big man, unfulfilled as he powered through the steamers. It all changed and sea salt was sold like gold, saving lives and tying wires a man without a clock. They looked for cream and harmonized alive upon the waves and they're still singing today. Roll of the SS Californium Oceanus was a pop star in near new neighbourhoods, deaf and dumb rocket ships that bore the brunt of packing luncheons. They swore the English watched bright lights and quoted scripture by the flash of the neon sun. Dark nights in old armour studied charts and stone rockets soaring through the skies. They hesitated in red and white, still signalling with fire and brimstone. Oceana spoke quietly, and after long delay she heard about death and sold her sisters. She was seen sinking, slowly taken over. She was blind and wore the darkness, innocent and glorious until death bent reckoning, a researched and verified degenerate. Survivors and Victims they were dead and uncounted. She swept dust in listed buildings, an alias for comfort and luxury. No one saw sense in staying. Most drifted south past wolves of steel, bloated by class and distinction. The rich stayed rich and smoked cigars. Retrieval and burial of the dead. Then they realised they couldn't drag themselves too sure. Tortured universals, followed by Canadians who robbed lighthouse neighbourhoods, readily buried in alcohol. The death was real, grim and disproportionate. So much cyanide required. They only kept the healthy, they only saved the brave. Rich and wealthy undertakers, large plots of land and anti-aircraft guns, burying the rest of the waterways. Then they moved on to Scottish banks, streamed live to office blocks in murder mystery computer games, shipped across America. Blood curdled in women's veins while dogs emerged victorious. They hovered time all over Canada, mostly known but sometimes half forgotten, only lonely soldiers. They were only numbers sinking underground beside the mountains. Months later, Oceanus found cadavers drifting in the ether then sinking through the ocean. Only one and five and none were dragged abroad. They went down on Mary or floated off and moulded with the currents. Wreck. They thought she fell whole, and she raised hell underwater, too hard to find under pressure. In time, they found Mary split in two, seated near the surface. Her floated corpse a hundred steps apart, unlucky miles from radio rapids. Bills intact and still valuable in spite of degradation, tossed away like scattered pennies for the beggars. Mary dropped everything in one giant ejector seat. She rests in pieces. Brand new bacteria, logical warfare, shoes and boots and blood solvent, waterside. She was seen by science and old men saw museums, a slow dementia knocking holes in ozone, piles of rust on the seafloor. Mary's daughter crawls her corpse for buckets, paving the way to survival. Legacy. Popular culture. Mary's not forgotten, drawn in books by stark, sad poets, intolerable. Her horrors rendered silent by the giants, ignored by fictional memoirs, called from the breast of democracy. Mary is a fine old sight for visuals, seconds from disaster and closer to God than thee. Her corpse is hiding behind boarded decking. Real quiet women failing Nazi propaganda. Historical lies we hide behind and still remember making money from tragedy. Mary's memorabilia crying in the foreground. Everybody wants you in the gutter. Legends and Myths she was never meant to be unsinkable, though built with big hips and virtually unstoppable. She was always changing songs upon the radio, nearer to death than God. They said she spoke in code, they signalled her hands in semaphore. Memorials and Monuments Mary is remembered with laws and huge erections all across the British Empire. Individuals from hometowns buried in the cold black ground. The music never died. Museums Mary is shown in broom cupboards, starting in sites where long legs once divided. Beaches in southern museums, the first boatload of lost souls and failures not remembered. She's still shown stateside, secret societies with strong arms. Real cool sailors in middle America, Mary's body doubled with pigeon-headed sisters, freezing in the ocean. 
There are more. Building walkways through first-rate cafeterias, walking in drag down Egyptian alleyways, seven sandy slabs hidden in the desert. Seaside palaces banked on recoverables, fished out like beer cans and hammered into old oak panels, coffins buried in the cemetery. 100th Anniversary Commemoration they shot heat seekers burning up the skies, horny in Northern Ireland, clapping hands for a moment in time. They sang praise for Mary, still nearer to God than anyone. They milked her for all her major movements and resold 3D glasses. They aired short dreams on international TV based on Mary's living parasites. They staged cold disasters and sang hymns on dark stars all over Liverpool. Meanwhile, royal blood runs deep through songs of night, hallucinating holograms of Mary, Mary, Mary. They cruised across her footsteps, staying silent in dark waters as rain pummeled metal plates on birthdays. Museums opened brand new doors, doors for the dead and the dying. There were more documentaries told in coded books and synthesized robotic social networks. She sent messages over oceans from one old man to another, minute by casual minute. And Mary shared stories miles off the coast and starting all over again.